Hey guys, and welcome back to a new tutorial series on multi-threading in Python. Now before I go too far, I just want to quickly mention that if you guys need any help throughout these videos, uh, all this stuff and all the code will be up on my website, techwithtim.net, and you guys can feel free to join my Discord server where I have a bunch of people that are always willing to help out and talk about programming and coding, uh, the link's in the description for that, and also you guys should follow my Twitter for some exclusive updates and when the next videos are coming out. Um, Going with that, if you guys can like the content uh, and you like what I'm doing on this channel, consider supporting me for a small donation per month by becoming a Patreon or by providing a donation via PayPal. Um, I don't make very much money off of YouTube and any donation really is greatly appreciated. Okay, so with that being said, let's get right into this video and talk about what is threading. So you've probably heard about threading before and it, you've probably heard about it talked about in the same kind of sentence as processes. And a lot of people get confused on what the difference between a process and a thread is. So that's what I'm going to explain here. And we're going to show a bit of an example code near the end of the video, illustrating kind of the differences. So here I'm in my task manager and you can see we have a long list of processes and you guys have probably done this before, open up task manager and maybe ended a task or ended a process and whatnot. Okay. So these are all our processes and essentially what a process is, is a program running on your computer. So now let's go to the performance tab and let's go to our CPU and let's have a look down here at the bottom. You can see we have 152 processes running and 1700 threads. So what is a thread? Well, essentially each process is made up of different threads. It could be one thread, but oftentimes it's many different threads. And a thread is essentially a task associated with a process. Okay, so now we're going to move over to this little illustration where I'm going to kind of try to show this to you. So I have kind of uh, a bunch of different things on the screen here. We're going to link these up in how they work together. So we have this Python file, which is what we write as the programmer. Okay. We have some threads. We have some processes. We have our computer's memory and a CPU. And just take note that this is a four core CPU. So let's start with processes. We already know what a process is. Essentially it's a program that's running on our computer. Now, what happens when we create a new process essentially is in uh, in memory, so in RAM, we allocate some space for our process. We say, well, created this new process, so everything that has to do with this process, we're going to store in box one. And box one is just a little slice of RAM, and that slice could be extended or it can be uh, it can become smaller. But we have like a general location for that process, and that's where it stores all of its uh, variables, all of the information that it needs. Okay. And that happens for all of our processes. So whenever we create a new process, we allocate a little slice of RAM for those processes. Now, when we do that, um, RAM is kind of like a queue and essentially it's going to indicate what needs to run first, what needs to run second and what needs to happen on a single core processor. What would happen is, well, we would read information from RAM, like we would read an instruction and then we'd write something back into RAM. And we just keep doing that and keep following kind of the sequence of things that have been added to RAM. But on a four core processor, instead of doing things one at a time, what we can do is we can actually split up all of the different tasks and all of the different processes that we have into, well, four groups, and essentially allowing us to do things four times faster. Not quite, but somewhat, okay? So we say, well, if we have four processes, Let's split these up onto each core of our CPU because each core can perform its own operations and do its own things independent of the other. So we'll say, well, process one, which is going to be stored in RAM, right, can go to core one. Process two can go to core two, three to three and four to four. You guys get the point, right? And that's why I labeled them here, allowing us essentially to do four things at once in parallel. So at the exact same time, we can be doing four things now on each core. Let's say, though, we can't be doing something at the same time on a core. So let's say we need to add a number and then we need to subtract a number. And that's like core one's job is to add something, then subtract something. Well, we first have to add and then we have to subtract. We can't do it. We can't do that at the exact same time, right? We got to perform operation one and then we can do operation two. Now, if we had that split onto two cores, well, we could technically do those at the same time. We could add one and subtract one at the exact same time because they're on two separate cores. This is kind of an important concept to understand. So now we kind of understand how processes work uh, with the CPU. They go into RAM, they have their own little space, and then their kind of instructions and the work that needs to be done gets divvied up between the cores on our CPU, essentially allowing us for to do four things at once in parallel at the same time. So now let's talk about threads. Where do these come in? 
Well, each process is made up of a bunch of different threads. And these threads are essentially different tasks that are running. Now, one thread, only one thread can be running at a time. We can't have two threads running at the exact same time. Um, like they can be um, stacked up, like we can have two threads that we've created, but their, com their commands and their execution, like if we need to add something and subtract things, um, they have to happen one after another. They can't happen in parallel. They're happening uh, in sequence, okay? So that's where threads come in. They essentially are just a bunch of tasks that make up a process. So where does this come in with our Python file? Well, up until now, likely you've probably just been creating single threaded programs, which mean that we have to wait for one line of code to execute before the next line of code executes. Um, and that's just the way that it works, right? We can't have two things happening at the same time. Now, when we create threads, that is still true, except we can actually switch between threads. So we can say like, maybe we have a function running. We have two functions running. We have one function that maybe is counting to hundred, another function that's counting to 50. Well, let's say maybe the function that's counting to 50 needs to stop for a second uh, and wait for maybe some user input or something to happen. Well, rather than not allowing the other function to run, what we'll do is we'll simply say, okay, well, if this one's waiting, let's switch to the other thread and let that run. So I'm going to show you an example now with some code and hopefully this will make this a bit more clear. Uh, but essentially just, I hope we kind of understood how this flows a little bit. All right. So if you get it just a little bit, then you guys should be good for this part. Okay. So now I'm just going to run you through some code that I wrote. This is actually from the Python website. I just kind of copied and modified it a bit that explains or kind of shows creating two threads and then their execution and how they kind of switch between one another. So remember I was saying, right that if one thread is waiting for something else to happen, like it's not executing any commands, it's just sitting there, it's idle, it's waiting, then rather than waiting for that thing to happen, let's run something else in the background, right? If we have two threads running and one is waiting, well, the other thread can start running. If that thread starts waiting and the other one has some commands and needs to be executed, let's do that. Because we can never truly do things in threads at the exact same time. We can't do two things like in the exact same like nanosecond, millisecond, right? They have to happen one after each other. But if one thread is not doing something, the other thread can be doing something. So that's how we kind of switch between things. So let me just run this and then we'll really dissect what's happening. So let's make this full screen. And you can see that we go thread one, thread two, one, two, one, two, and just wait for this to happen. Sweet. So essentially what we've done here is thread one runs. Okay. And it's what, what these, both these threads are trying to do by the way is count down to zero. So starting at five, they're trying to go to zero. Once they get to zero, they just exit. So thread, we start thread one and then we start thread two and then thread one runs. It goes five thread two runs. It goes five. Okay. And then thread one runs, thread two runs, thread one runs. And would you look at this thread one runs again because it's not waiting. It just keeps going. So now thread one's waiting for a second. So thread two goes, thread two's waiting for a second, thread one goes, thread one's done. And now thread two goes until it finishes. It's kind of a weird execution, uh, but we'll show why this happens if I just go here. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm creating two threads and each thread runs this function. It's called print time. And all it does is it takes a counter, which is gonna start at five and it tries to get down to zero. But notice that I have this time dot sleep in here and this time dot sleep is essentially delaying the function uh, a certain amount of time. So my thread one, every time it runs delays one second and my thread two, every time it runs delays uh, 1.5 seconds. So what happens is, and we'll bring up this console again, is when thread one runs, it does this. It says while the counter, uh, which means we're not at zero essentially, time dot sleep delay. The delay is one second. So we can see we wait one second and then we run thread one and thread one goes five. It prints that out. It prints the time. And then you can even see here, it delays one second. So it comes back up to this while loop delays one second. And since it's delayed, we say, okay, well, this is a perfect opportunity to run thread two. So thread two gets run. And you can see that it happens exactly one second after thread one runs because well, it was waiting, right? And once that time, so, so it went, okay, now, th thread two delays for that little second of time. And while thread two is delaying, well, it says, okay, this is a perfect opportunity to run thread one. So then thread one runs. And then 
what happens is thread one delays again, right? It does this little delay and then it says, oh, well, we're delaying thread one, nothing's running. So let's go to thread two. So it swaps, goes to thread two, runs, same thing. Thread three runs because we're delaying thread two for a second, right? And then we go back to thread one, thread two, thread one, um, and so on. Now you might notice here that thread one runs twice in a row. Now that's because, well, thread one runs, all right? And see, it's only delaying one second, whereas thread two is delaying 1.5 seconds. So it's kind of a weird, but just think about this example, right? So thread two goes, it delays one and a half seconds. This, this delay happens, one and a half seconds. Thread one runs, it delays one second. Now the thing is, when we go back to thread two, it's still delaying, like it's still in, it's still waiting for one and a half seconds to go by. So if that's happening, and we switch back to thread one, thread one, well, maybe it's done its delay. It's done its one second delay. So it just executes again, and then it delays for one second. So we switch back to thread two, we check that delay, that delay is done, so we run thread two, and then we just keep going through the program. And notice that it says exit thread one, um, just telling us that we're finished, we're done counting to five, so we're gonna get out of that thread, and then thread two will just go um, one after each other until it eventually exits and is done. And that is kind of how threading works. I know this might have been a little bit confusing. In the next videos, I think things will really clear up when we do some real world examples of threading and maybe a bit of networking stuff, which is a good example of threading. Um, but yeah, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you do, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel and let me know if there's anything that you'd like me to improve on in terms of explanation or to explain a little bit better in the next video.